I want you all to think about a train. A train that doesn't have a railway to get on after a certain point. So what's the solution? If there is no railway, there isn't a way, right? Well, that is true, but for trains. The problem is that us humans are just like these trains. Instead, we should build our own paths. We are in the 21st century and are still completely dependent on these man-made resources. Resources that do more bad than they do good. I get that we need these at some point, but there's no need to use them so much. Being a kid and seeing global warming and climate change being the only thing on the news for a certain amount of time wasn't and isn't going to be the best thing to remember as childhood. I still remember when I was around seven, I was sitting on the floor looking up to the TV, watching this, having no clue what the newscast was saying. Thinking to myself, what is global warming? Chemicals, aren't they harmful? That very day, I got up and searched on the web, global warming. I went through articles I still un didn't understand, not because I didn't know the definition, because I was confused, thinking, why would humans, who are technically animals, and rely on Earth in so many ways, want to harm their own planet? We have made Earth 99% polluted. Harming something that's protecting us is like betraying someone who's always been on your side. Resources. The definition of resources is something that's available for almost everybody to use. Now, like always, we humans created our own type called man-made resources. Like the name suggests, resources that we created, like paper, plastic, and rubber. I thought there must be a way. We have made Earth 99% polluted, like I said. Well, tell me, how is paper available for everyone if some people can't access it? In deserts and other places where there's a scarcity of water, a lot of trees don't grow. So the consumption of paper and the production of paper is surprisingly less. In small towns and underdeveloped places, chemical materials and plastic materials aren't produced because there's not a lot of large-scale industries. So why are these things essential? I remembered a quote from Albert Einstein, where there's a will, there's a way. Finding more efficient resources are more beneficial. And if we can do this in the future, we will be able to reduce more pollution than we ever have in the past, as well as waste and more. Now, satisfying our needs and helping the environment all at once. Thinking about how good that could be. Killing two birds with one stone. You all might be thinking in the audience, can, can we even do this? Is this even possible? Well, my name is Arya Jain, and after this, I will show you how. This leads us to our first solution. I want you to think about life before the invention of paper. Well, before the invention of paper, we had to rely on stone, caves, and the bark of birch trees whenever we'd have to write something down. This wasn't the most reliable thing. So what was the solution? This shows us that paper is very important. It's not just used for one thing, but for many. Writing, drawing, parceling, the list goes on and on. So can we stop it? Can we stop the production? No, but we will substitute it. Crop residues are crops that are left over after the harvesting of fields. Maybe they're defected, or maybe they have an infestation of insects. Either way, they are normally wasted and go to wastelands where they're normally burnt. So we're not only saving trees, but we're also saving the atmosphere and making sure that it doesn't get more polluted. This might not be the best and the whitest paper or the smoothest, but it's still such an excellent option. An alternative to these are fiber crops, long, flexible bast fibers. Using the same thing and the process that we use for normal paper, we can create a similar paper. Option two is stone paper. You might not believe me, but you can make paper out of stone. Yes, stone. The only difference between stone paper and regular paper, conventional paper, is in the aspect of raw materials used for 
its production process. For the paper made from trees, conventional paper, we use the pulp of trees as well as a lot of water. But for stone, we use none of them. So in this one, we don't only save trees, but also save the water usage. If we use these two materials day to day and make them a normal medium, we can reduce 50% of, of deforestation, making sure that trees stay. Four billion trees are cut yearly just for the production of paper. Two billion of those are wasted, normally thrown away, with no use. That means only two billion of them are actually used. We can change the amount of paper produced. So what can we do? Well, we can change the mark it gives on Earth. It's expected by the year 2100, all trees will be gone because of the recent increase in deforestation. So by doing these two things, we can make sure that there's trees still. This leads us to our second solution, the great plastic dilemma. Raise your hands if you've heard the government talking about eco-waste management and how by stopping the usage of such materials, we will be able to magically solve all of Earth's problems. Well, that is certainly not true. And that is because we need these items. So we can't stop the usage of them. So what can we do? Is there a solution? Yes. The solution isn't to stop the usage, but is to keep the items, these plastic bottles, bags, to-go boxes. And now what do we do? We change its source. Now, what's the answer to this? How? The answer is bioplastics. Bioplastics are renewable biomass sources created from things like sawdust, recyclable food waste, like vegetable fruits and peels, as well as vegetable fats. So from things that we normally don't use and waste, we can take these things and create plastic. This plastic is more efficient and we can do everything that we use normal plastic for without demolishing the environment. 380 million pieces of plastic. That's how much is produced on a daily basis. From that, 8 million of those make their way into the ocean every single day. That means that on a yearly basis, 288 million pieces of plastic are in the ocean. So what can we do? If we use bioplastics, our Earth will get restored again. This is how Earth used to look, how its water used to look. Because of the increase in plastic, this is how it looks now. So how do we make figure B turn back into figure A? Simple. Like I said, we use bioplastics. The full form is biodegradable plastic. So obviously, it's, it can dissolve into the soil, like what biodegradable means. But it can also dissolve into water. So when plastic normally stays on the top and slowly goes down, sinking, and stays there, not for decades, but millenniums on millenniums, we can use bioplastics. It'll stay for maybe a day on the top, slowly goes down, and then after that will dissolve over time. Not suddenly, but much more quicker than regular plastic. So, by doing just these two simple things, we can change Earth. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much you're doing all at once. It matters that you're doing something. Thank you.